on a march, um, you know, the, like I said, what, the way I would see this being organized is when people came like a half hour before the event was going to set up and you're a marshal and you'd check in, you'd get an armband and you would be uh, given a group either front, back, east side, west side, and then we would tell people to basically, uh, the back would take the northern perimeter of the demonstration, the front would take the southern perimeter of the demonstration, the west side marshals would take the west side part and the east side marshals, so the whole perimeter would sort of have people around it. Um, and most likely one or two marshals would just keep walking the perimeter, checking in with people, telling you what's going on. Um, then when we were ready to go, we would sort of give a, like a 10 minute warning to let people know to get ready. Um, and what the front marshals do um, is uh, set a really slow pace. Now normal New Yorker walking pace is about three miles an hour. Um, normal march pace is more like one mile an hour. And it's really slow, it's baby steps. And it's really hard to do. But there's like a, 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 something, it's like a law of physics that no matter how slow the front is going, the back is running. <laughs> and I, it, it, it's just true. And so uh, the front of the march can only go as fast as the slowest people on the march, which means that if we have elderly people with us, uh, people with baby strollers, uh, people in wheelchairs, that we have to set a slow pace because we don't want to leave people behind um, and we don't want the march to get big gaps, um, which it will, but inevitably no matter how slowly the front is going, a rear marshal will sort of come skipping up to the front and say, you're moving too fast. And we're like, we're crawling. And they're like, there's a big gap. And it's like, OK, we'll stop the march and wait for everybody to, to catch up. Uh, and then we'll go again. So the front really has to move slowly. Um, the front also, um, sometimes uh, if there's a banner, you have to keep people behind the banner because people don't realize how slowly the banner is going and they get out in front of the banner and you have to get them behind the banner. The front also sometimes has to remind the press that we're a march, not a photo opportunity, and that they have to keep moving. So at the beginning of a march, usually there's a lot of photo opportunity and then there's uh, an opportunity to tell the press that they have to get out of the way of the march because we're moving. And so there's this sort of constant telling the photographers, no offense, Owen, to, uh, to, keep, uh, to keep moving back. Um, now, uh, sometimes, uh, whether it's planned or unplanned, people will feel so strongly about a demonstration that they will um, do civil disobedience. Um, so one of the things that we like to do as marshals, again, because we're not police, so we don't tell people you can't do this. What we want to do is tell them that if they persist in doing it, they are risking arrest. And you know, are, are you prepared for that? Um, because you, know, you may be in a situation where there's a march and a bunch of people decide to do a die-in. And, and, you know, and you tell the police, like, give me five minutes and I'll get people up. And then if people don't want to get up, you have to say to, to the people, and they're in your group, uh, you know, if you stay here, you're risking arrest. If you don't want to risk arrest, it, you know, the group would like to proceed. Mm -hmm. not, you know, and it's not like we're going to call the police on you, but like the group would like to proceed. Um, if they're like, no, you know, we're going to stay here, it's like, okay, you guys know you're risking arrest, and we, and, and we back off. Um, and uh, generally that... Uh, that can be done without a lot of uh, bad feelings between the organizers and who is ever doing it. There's a, um, a rule of what I will call upping the ante, which is no matter what you plan, a certain number of people who come to your demonstration will think that 
you're not going far enough. And they will always want to take it one step further. So if you create a rally, they want to march. If you create a rally and a march, they want to do a die-in. If you do the rally, the march, and the die-in, then they don't want to get up. And it's like, really? But it hap it's, just, it's just the law of people being so angry and so upset and so passionate that that's what they want to do. And as marshals, sometimes we're stuck dealing with that. Um, I would never want to leave people behind. So if the police say what's going on, I would say we have some people doing a die-in as soon as they get up, we'll proceed to move. One thing I will say about a pen is that a pen has to have an entrance and an exit, and you have to be able to leave, and you have to be able to enter so, uh, and without having to ask the police to do that. So people sh will be able to enter and leave the demonstration as they, as they need to. So let me, uh, so we talked a little bit about front marshals. Um, side marshals, what side marshals do, let's say you're walking down 7th Avenue. Um, so let's say we're at 40th Street and 7th Avenue and 40th Street should be going east. So the uh, marshals on the west side of the demonstration, like four or five of them would hold hands, smile at the drivers, and say it's just going to be a minute. <laughs> and as the march goes by, and you're just like, nice, yeah, hi, <laughs> Trump. Yeah. It's like good. Um, and, and you just you want to um, you want to engage with them. Now the rule of blocking traffic is that the easiest way to block traffic is to wait till the light is red because the cars are already stopped. So when the light, if you're a side marshal and you're going to help block traffic, you, uh, the march won't enter the intersection until the light is red. When the light's red, you go out, you hold hands, you look at the traffic, you say well, one minute, and then people go by. And again, you don't get out of the street if the light is green because you don't want the traffic to try to make that light. So you hold the intersection from red to red. Um, and you can do this whether the march is on the sidewalk or whether the march is in the street. But the whole object, and generally they'll put like one police officer there as well, but we do it as a friendly thing, um, to both to make our people feel safe and to um, uh, to make eye contact to, to, with, with the drivers and to not rely, we try not to rely on the police to do things. Now, so let's say that the march is four blocks long. So now the front of the march is at 36th Street, but you're at 40th Street. You don't want to end up all the marshals at the back of the march. So then the side marshals end up doing a lot of leapfrogging. Okay, so the rule of marshalling on, a, on the side is be prepared that you're going to be doing more walking than anybody else, um, but also that you never run, okay? Because running marshals panics people because they don't know you're running to block traffic at 35th Street. They just see a bunch of marshals running and they're like, oh shit, what's going on? So what you can do is skip because a skipping marshal looks really silly and no one is going to panic if they see a marshal skipping. You can also, we were talking about Monty Python, you can go back to the Ministry of Silly Walks <laughs> and really walk fast. The march should be moving very slowly, so it shouldn't be that hard to catch up, to get back up to the front. But if you're a side marshal, you're gonna end up at the back several times on a long march, and each time you're gonna have to go back up. So does that make sense to people about the leapfrogging? So, yep. No, no, you hold, you hold the whole, the whole, you will hold, wait for the whole march to go by. Okay. Unless they can stop you. So the, the, the police will be doing this also. Okay. So they should not stop you. Um, only once, uh, unfortunately, uh, last year, did the, have I seen the police arrest marshals trying to protect pedestrians from traffic? Um, but, 
and that was that was when the president was in town and it was really unusual but generally the police understand what you're doing it's nonviolent you, you know they don't want the traffic to go through while people are walking so so I would say like on on an uh, like on 7th Avenue if you um, it's probably like two to three thousand people a block like if you if you had like the whole block if you have like two lanes it's probably half that it's probably like 1500 people uh, it depends how dense people are um, Right, and, and what you'll find is that uh, you can pull people out of the crowd to help. Uh, the, the traffic blocking thing is a really simple, uh, and it's an enjoyable thing to do. It doesn't take a lot of skill, and uh, people like doing it because uh, it's actually, for me, more fun to marshal a demonstration than to go to it as a participant. It's just more interesting, so it's very easy to get people to um, to help do it if you uh, if you need to. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. When you're on that side, Marshall, if you're if you're one of those people and you're in that intersection, I find it's very good to make eye contact yeah. with the driver in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of want to know what's going yeah. on there. <laughs> um, I always get this question: if there's an ambulance. You hold the march, on the, and you you clear the intersection. And no, I right. I mean it. it it's but it, it it almost always comes up as a question if I don't say that. You know, we don't want an ambulance like waiting like. But if it's just like some obnoxious person who wants to get home and is like honking their horn, sorry. Um, so uh, the back marshals. Everyone thinks that back marshal is the easiest job, but it is actually not. Um, the back marshals uh, deal with all the problems. Uh, so because they deal with the people who sprain an ankle. They deal with uh, the people who are really slow and chatty. Uh, they deal with hecklers. Uh, and they deal with the police who want you to move faster, and you have to explain to them, we're moving as fast as we can. Uh, and the, uh, the, everyone thinks the front marshals get all the glory um, because that's where the cameras are, but uh, back marshaling is really, really, really important. Um, if someone does injure themselves, um, that is the only time that I am comfortable going to the police for help because that is something that they are trained in they know how to do and they can radio for help. If someone does get injured, like a, a you know, and the kind of things that peop happen are people get dehydrated, uh, they faint, uh, they trip, uh, uh, at least one or two marshals should stay with them uh, while the police get help. What do you do um, when there's another group there that wants to up the ante? Because what we did was not enough. And you can't tell them, no, we own this, because we don't. Um, but you want people to know who came that our part is done. And if there's anything else that's going to happen, uh, that's great. But we're not running it.